Good morning, folks. Solar flares are returning. We've got details of space weather to discuss along with a full plate of top news articles today. But let's begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We're coming to 193 angstroms and finding a very calm and quiet day. Solar wind from the coronal hole is still en route, so we focus on the bright area to the left, north of the equator. We've already seen one minor solar flare attempt to budge the charts. The only sunspots visible are turning onto the disk now with medium to small size, but with a lateral spread, so eyes on them. Meanwhile, if you're carefully watching behind that incoming group, you'll see the flare source was actually an eruptive event just behind the limb out of view. Both continue turning around today. Let's quickly look at the coronal holes in 211 angstroms. As I mentioned, the stream from the northern departing opening has yet to arrive and it appears that second arm may be too far north to impact. Also worth noting, we had a little sundiving Kreutz comet approach our star yesterday. He had no chance of survival as he disappeared in the early hours of this morning near the corona. Folks, here are some different shots of the storms that whacked New Mexico yesterday. Here in the New Valley of the Sun, one died and five were rescued during the flash flood. But also, let's note the gorgeous flow north out of the clouds in Arizona. There is a high-level west-to-east slow shift, and there's low-level clouds over Texas incoming from the east. This convergence of air masses is what brings the most intense storms. Now, let's work our way out into space and reel it back at the end. New immigrant transplant to our solar system, they say. This Jovian asteroid is said to have moved here from another system, given its retrograde orbit opposite the planets and most other bodies in the solar system. But one wonders if it could be a remnant of the time when the planets went haywire in our early days. Up next, you've got two aesthetic links, one to a circumstellar environment and outflow coil at T Tau. The ESA also released this shot from Herschel, which I feel compelled to play around with just so we can note the structure and formation areas versus infrared re-emission. The negative color look was wholly for fun. Now we're entering our big stories of the day, starting at the galactic scale. It has long been believed that the stellar disk has a radius of about 15 kiloparsecs, but new data is revealing stars in the disk out past 26 kiloparsecs and perhaps past 30. That doubles the standard width of our galactic disk if true, and is more than 20% larger than the previous maximum hypothesis. Sorry, Dark Halo. Looks like you've got some company out there. And the top story today is about stellar encounters with our system. While they have found nothing that is coming close anytime soon, their discovery of over 600 new possible stellar encounters in the next 5 million years, with dozens being very, very close, they are extrapolating what they have probably missed, saying they've probably found only 15% of the stellar encounters because they can't yet see all the very cold and very faint dwarf stars. And also, that 18 to 22 of such encounters should be within one parsec of our star every million years. Well, if that is the case, then we are looking at an average encounter cycle of between 45 and 55,000 years. That's their range. And now let's compare that with the last stellar encounter, Shoal's star, a red binary 70,000 years ago. They don't say we're overdue. Just the math does. And finally, they constrain some rocks to becoming ridiculously close, well within the Oort cloud. And we should remember that those distances are to the system Berry Center. Shoal's star was a binary, and most stars are. Binary systems can be hundreds of AU to thousands of AU apart, and their planets can be orbiting pretty far off as well. What happens when one of those systems comes inside the Oort cloud? Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. There are only 15 VIP spots left for OTF 2019, and yesterday we learned Joan Burkpile will be coming back again next year. Hope to shake your hand in the desert. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.